G'day everybody, this is uh, Paul Lyons here from paintings.nz. It's the 20th of March and this is day uh, 26 of the New Zealand lockdown. So I'm painting my 26th picture of the lockdown. This is going to be a painting of Mount Cook, Auraki Mount Cook in the South Island of New Zealand, New Zealand's tallest peak. Um, we took a, a ruinously expensive um, flight several years ago over um, the Tasman Glacier and around Mount Cook and the, the surrounding mountains um, and the uh, pilot said before we all got on this scenic flight now don't spend all your time taking photographs just enjoy the experience look at the scenery well I spent all my time taking photographs and I must say I have never regretted it because I've gone back to that those photographs so many times and I've painted uh, quite a number of them. Uh, it was really very worthwhile capturing all that information on film or on digital um, medium. So uh, we'll start off as uh, I often do with the sky and. Uh, So I usually turn my piece of paper upside down so that I can cut in around the uh, the mountains or whatever it is that happens to be the uh, um, top item that's uh, projecting into the sky. Since this um, since this skyline is fairly. Um, detailed and probably well known to a whole lot of people you'll say oh yes I climbed up there and that doesn't really quite look like that so I better try to uh, do something that's vaguely topographically accurate um, So I'll use a, a smaller brush that can get into the uh, little corner shapes without quite so much probability that I will um, paint my water over the uh, over the the snow-capped peaks because of course many a time it doesn't matter if you bring the sky down over um, bush or um, rocky mountains um, but if the mountains are snow clad and you start putting uh, paint over the snow well there's not a lot you can do about them. retrieving the, uh, the white of the paper oil colours or acrylics of course um, doesn't matter a damn because you're probably going to add the uh, the white later but with watercolour uh, the white comes from the colour of the paper unless you want to use white paint which um, just has a different appearance doesn't look the same it's opaque, whereas well, we can get into a long discussion about whether or not watercolour pigments are opaque or, or transparent. The, the traditional uh, claim is that they're transparent. Um, they're not. They're no more transparent than oil pigments or acrylic pigments are. In fact, they are the same pigments for 99% of the cases. Um, but they seem transparent because instead of sitting in layers the way they do with... Uh, um, uh, oil paints or acrylic paints um, they mix in together amongst the uh, the, the uh, fibres of the paper and uh, when the light um, comes along and hits the 
pigment um, it gets reflected off multiple pigments so they you get the effect of the, of the, the um, pigments working in concert as it were and it looks as though the uh, the paint is transparent although in fact it's not I'm not sure that, that was a terribly coherent explanation because I was busy concentrating on applying the paint one of these days I think I might do a, a video about um, colour and um, watercolour paint and how paint works. When I say might, I mean might. This series of paintings has turned out to be quite a lot of work. And originally it was just going to be paintings and uh, a photo. And I had no uh, conception of doing videos. In fact, I didn't start them until um, painting number three. So paintings one and two are in fact only represented by photographs. Um, but from there on I've been doing videos and they just take a while to organise. I seem to have sorted out the problems that I was having at the beginning with my camera. Um, and I've discovered that it will only take half hour videos. So Because of course I'm, I'm just, as I say, I didn't start out the uh, uh, the series intending to make videos, so I had to use whatever um, equipment I happened to have available to me during the lockdown period. Because you can't wander out and buy a video camera, um, so I'm using my uh, ordinary still camera, which is capable of taking videos. Um, but uh, it has a, a limit of half an hour. I'm not quite sure why, because uh, it's not it's not filling up the uh, the memory card, and it's also not uh, using the whole of the the battery. For a long time, I thought the the reason that it was cutting out was that it was running out of battery. But it seems that it's. Uh, running out of this half an hour limit, or running into this half an hour li limit, um, that uh, seems to be built into the camera. Now I want, um, this is quite, not quite wet enough, and I don't really want to wet into the mouth, I suppose it's going to be alright if I hold it the right way. So if I uh, wet into the sky and just let the paint um, move around a bit. I'll hopefully get a very deep blue at the top um, transiting to a pale blue down around the mountain and as we've discovered on any number of occasions the uh, um, paint will dry a lot uh, lighter than uh, when you first apply it. So spraying that water has allowed the sky to uh, to diffuse into the, the mountains. don't really want, it's not too bad, but it also hasn't um, smo evened out the sky as much as I was hoping. So let's just do a bit more um, evening out of the, the wet paint. 
or attempting to. Oh, doesn't seem to be working very well. Has on previous occasions. As you, you've uh, possibly seen if you've been watching um, any more of this series of videos. That's not oh, it's coming along a bit. Um, it's not too bad. Pretty dark. Mind you, I don't mind having a dark corner to the to the painting. Um, one of the things that one likes to do is to prevent people's um, attention from being drawn to the corners of oops sprayed blue paint everywhere um, to, to prevent people's attention from being attracted to the corners of a, a painting and having a, um, a fairly dark corner that's better um, means that their eye is not attracted to uh, to that location so I think what I'm going to do is to dry that uh, at this point and then possibly do another layer of blue. I want this to be very dark at the top. So yes you can see how much that uh, how much lighter that got when it dried. Feels pretty dry except along that edge maybe. So let's just um, try and dry that off a bit. And it's got a very dark edge on it as well, which looks a bit suspicious. So yeah, maybe it feels a bit damp, but uh, yeah, the most most of it feels fine. Um, so I think now what we're going to have to do is to to wet it again and just dry it. Yeah, you can see there is pigment still moving around, can't you? But uh, we will try to uh, keep that movement to a minimum, but I'm going to have to do the uh, um, the business of, of uh, cutting in around these um, wiggly edges. Wiggly edges to me, a million tons of rock to a, to a geologist. create hard edges in, in doing this except at the um, edge of the mountain. One of the problems with, with doing multiple layers of paint is that you tend to, uh, if you've got um, complex edges to things, um, that's not what I wanted to do. Ooh. If you've got complex edges to things, um, you tend to obliterate the uh, little sharp corners on things because you, you just paint over them without meaning to. All right, before we mess it up completely, um, let's add. Some more blue. Looking really dark. As we know, that will uh, become less dark. There's a, a sharp peak, which is possibly the most important peak in the uh, most important sharp point in the picture, being the actual top of the mountain that I've um, lost the sharpness of. Which is a bit of a pity. But I might be able to retrieve it at the end by uh, um, scraping it with a knife, razor blade, and that should uh, 
bring back the white of the paper. Of course, that's the uh, provided the, the area that you've covered with sky isn't too too large. Um, the uh, fact that you're painting snow-capped peaks means that if you scrape back to the, the white, white of the paper um, then uh, you are scraping back to the white of the snow so it's not such a bad thing it should be wetting the paper more shouldn't I because this paint is not flowing and I don't really want to keep doing the um, the spraying over and over again because well for a start off it's spraying splattering um, onto the onto the mountains and it doesn't always give you a completely but a completely even coating of paint but we're going to try it anyway to see what happens I think that was too high in the sky. That's more like it. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fair amount of drying there. It still feels slightly damp, maybe. And uh, yeah, the sky is not producing the even um, wash that I was looking for. I've usually been able to uh, to produce very even washes um, by applying several coats of, of blue, um, usually about three. This is not looking quite so good. Never mind, we'll... Uh, it's still damp in there. Um, I'll do a bit more drying and then uh, um, have another go for another coat. Yeah. All right, one more go onto some <laughs> extremely hot paper. I like these brushes, these um, big, what are they, one and a half inch, I think is the Official designation of them, so it makes them what 37 millimeters, uh, 38 millimeters. Um, they were very cheap. I think the first one I got was about seven dollars. Um, I think they went up in price later to about 12 or 15 or something but um, the biggest downfall the biggest drawback to those brushes seems to be that um, painters are not the only fans of those brushes and at least one moth which grew fat and happy on the hairs from one of my one and a half inch goat hair brushes. I was very unhappy when I came to paint and discovered that it had eaten not from top to bottom of the brush but across the uh, um, the width of the brush well that's uh, 
evened out the blue a little bit, I think. So I might try drying it again at this at this point. And if I've got any sense, I'll probably leave it. Um, throw my hands up in horror and leave it. Okay. Um, while I was drying that, the uh, Oh, yes, the 29 minutes. I say it's a half an hour, but it actually runs out after 29 minutes for some godforsaken reason. Um, the 29 minutes ran out. It's the first time I've ever actually captured the uh, or caught the camera while it uh, actually ran out and uh, allowed me to start recording immediately. So it really just seems to be just a, a hardwired um, limit on the amount of time that the video will run for. I really don't know why that should be. But, well, that's fine. <laughs> now that we know what's going on, um, if I provided I capture it, or catch it, I don't know why I'm saying capture, capture, provided I catch it when it happens, um, then nothing should be left out. And let's try and clean up some of this gunge at the back. This is the, the painting that's appearing on the back of the uh, back of the sheet of paper. Um, Alright, so now a whole lot of rocks. Um, some of them are very black and some of them are fairly brown. Um, so I might start with the fairly brown ones. This brown is fairly red, but never mind. And uh, a bit of cloud towards the bottom here. It's um, well, it's blue. I don't really want blue. Um, let's just put in a bit of well, it's blue anyway. Oh well. I suppose cloud can be blue. Yeah, break it down a bit. Um, and uh, let the uh, the rock diffuse into that. So I don't really want to. Uh, spend all my time doing a portrait of snow-covered rocks because of course snow-covered rocks can be different from one day to the next. On the other hand, um, some of these shapes may very well be ones that people recognise. Oh, that's the... Well, I don't know any of the mountaineers' terms, but you know, that's the South Col or whatever it is um, it's the, you know, the chimney that we climbed up. So I want the uh, appearance to be um, reasonably close to what people who have been there might recognise. Well, it's in line with where I should be on the painting. I'm sort of going across from left to right, and it's very easy to uh, suddenly discover that you've got the scale wrong and that you're far farther to the right than you thought you would be. Um, and these rocks have gone in completely the wrong place, or you haven't got anywhere near as far as you need to have got from left to right. But I think I seem to be in about the right place. I sat in a staff meeting 
um, a few years ago, um, bored out of my skull, um, and uh, drew a portrait, painting, drawing, picture, drew a picture of one of my colleagues who was sitting there um, completely stationary for hours on end um, and uh, it was clearly him I absolutely captured his likeness but it was also clearly very bad all his features were just sufficiently out of position um, to uh, to make it a very poor um, attempt at a portrait, so I didn't show it to him. <laughs> and I don't, I don't generally do. Um, pictures of people very often. So there's that very sharp thing there. So yeah, these seem to be in more or less the right place. So I don't know. Maybe I should uh, maybe I should have a go at painting people again, um, just to see whether or not I can achieve a more um, robust likeness. Is that the right word to use? A more accurate likeness. It's very easy to say, say to yourself, well, you know, this is awfully, um, awfully random. It doesn't really matter very much what I do. Um, but unless you're very good at portraying the shapes of rocks, unless you've got some sort of uh, um, innate understanding of how rocks behave, it's easy to end up with things that don't look realistic at all. So some people seem to manage to uh, um, take a a big brush like this and um, describe a a, a, um, a mountain range by going like this like this, like this, and you know, all of a sudden it just looks like um, a range of mountains, well I don't seem to be able to do that. Uh, so I end up being a bit more painstaking about it. Um, there's a whole bunch more cloud down here as well actually, which I could probably put in if I was feeling enthusiastic. That's very pale and snowy. So Just do that to indicate those 
pale snowy bits. So as I said, so I was trying to be careful when I was doing the sky to preserve these two uh, tiny little dints in the, uh, the mountain range and I haven't really managed that um, but there are a couple and they've got um, reasonably distinctive um, rock formations associated with them. So there's a, a, oh, a ridge running down there, which I didn't mean to, to paint in, but now I have. Um, but there's also a little valley running down there as well. Actually, it is quite dark. I don't know why I did that? Um, and more of this. Ooh, that's too heavy. That's not. It's not a complete disaster. Um, and then we've got, in fact, fairly heavy. And. Uh, very steep ridge there, another ridge down here. So that's actually fairly solid rock mostly, it's not very much in the way of snow there. And we've got um, more this pale stuff another ridge fairly solid ridge there and I might just add some um, where are we there we go some cloud in this region of the, the painting so that the um, so that those ridges are sort of disappearing into cloudy area We've got that going down there, we've got stuff up there. This ridge goes down a bit further. Oh, that was the one that I was going to cut short, but I've actually got a bit more leeway than I thought. Okay. So there are those three, and they all more or less run into each other, so they're not that much space between them. And there's tongue of snow coming down there. Right, so that's down there, got all that. That I might just um, put in some uh, okay, um, back with you again. I've managed to let the uh, the battery go flat without noticing it, so I've uh, filled in all this um, rocky material up at the top here um, while your back was turned, as it were. And uh, what I'm going to move on to now is to try to do some of the darker rocks.
the lateral um, to for uh, for rocks, I think pretty much. A um, little bit, uh, a little bit in here, because there is a little bit in there. Um, and it's a bit messier there than I've drawn it. anything out? I have two. I've left a bit out here. Okay, so now I think we can move on to um, to snow, which is I think going to be a lot more difficult to uh, um, portray it's very subtle try and get three dimensionality three dimensionality on snow but uh, well we're here so let's let's give it a go shall we try and dry off that grip on the uh, So snow is uh, reflecting the sky, so it's quite blue, um, and snow up here is um, probably the darkest, and I won't um, leave it quite as dark as that, so this is going to be a, going to involve a fair amount of, you puts it on and you takes it off, um, painting. So. Shape down there, there's a, a shadow and there's more shadow in there. So we'll do that and this whole area is uh, a little bit darker but uh, before we do that let's... There's a fairly shadowed area down here. And for some reason or other I seem to have omitted um, yeah that's going up there so then we can bring the uh, oh what have I done wrong brush This shadow colour down there, and then there's quite a deep shadow around that. Um, and more around there. And something coming up from that spur of rock. And then there's odd bits and pieces down here. Um, that's all fairly shaded, so hmm. Might be better if I use a, a clean of cloth. So I'm getting green into my snow, which I don't really want. Um, hmm. Next mental note, do not drag the cloth across the uh, the paint, the, the, dark, the dark paint particularly, um, will pick up 
uh, and get dragged across. So you can see I'm trying to use the uh, um, the fact that the the brush doesn't uh, sorry the brush the, the towel doesn't uh, produce a, uh, a completely even um, blotting out to just introduce some texture into the uh, into the shapes. That's actually really really quite quite there. Um, yeah, we might leave that as it is. Um, that's fairly light. That's fairly, fairly medium, really. Um, and there's a uh, reasonably dark shadow there, which goes into a, a line further up the hill. With a fair amount of texture in it, the shadow. Okay, um, go back over here and I think it's got more of the nature of the area in it. And up here. Okay, so that's quite dark. In that region. That's not accurate, but it does work, I think, as a shadow. So we've got, in amongst all this scrappy rock, we've got some shadow. I suppose that's where the, uh, um, Rocks are more vertical and therefore not holding snow. It's darker than I wanted, I think. There we go, that's better. Um, and not only are they, therefore are they not holding snow, but also um, they're in shadow. All right, um, kind of got to where we want to get to. Um, but do you remember right at the beginning I said that I'd uh, brought the sky down over the point of the mountain and I was going to have to scrape it out? That's what I'm doing now. So this is um, 640 gram per square meat uh, per square meter paper, um, which is pretty robust. Um, so your your usual uh, photocopy of paper would be um, about 70 GSM. So this is getting on for 10 times as heavy as that. So it's it's not quite cardboard, but um, nevertheless. Uh, Pretty solid. 
Okay. I've got the spare battery in, the previous battery having then gone flat. Um, the spare battery doesn't last as long as the the main one. So I think I'm going to have to stop. Anyway, um, this is more or less done, I think. So, thank you for uh, keeping me company this evening, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Good night.